start with the culture of relentlessness that might to investors sound like a great thing. Hey, that's exactly what we want. We want the Jeff Bezos, you know, the Amazon approach. Uh, why is it a double edged sword in Moderna's case? Yeah, and, and you can make that argument. A lot of people make the comparison to kind of Steve Jobs and those kinds of uh, entrepreneurs and e executives. Uh, there's a line you don't want to cross, right? So you want morale to be strong and you want people uh, working hard for a common cause. And um, they have a very unique culture where Stefan and others work very hard. It's a relentless environment. It's a difficult environment, long hours. He pushes them. He calls them out. If he thinks they're a little slow, he tells them as such. And like you said, that can create real progress and even breakthroughs. And if they are the ones, it's not clear, they're at one of the uh, um, front runners here. If they're the ones who bring us all a vaccine, then we'll be thankful for that unique, uh, difficult culture. Right. And you're referring to the CEO, Stefan Bansell. Um, but some of the other red flags uh, for investors have been the fact that this company has 20 plus experimental drugs and vaccines, but none that have been close to being commercially available to patients. Um, the issue with the stock uh, at all-time highs when they did a stock sale earlier this year, the fact that insiders, including the CEO, have been sellers of the stock. I mean, these are traditional red flags. What does the company say when you ask them? Well, as you said, it's a, sort of a battleground kind of stock, all kinds of passions. Just, you know, after we wrote the story, you, you should see the emails uh, I've received. You have people that are very um, supportive and, and, and encouraged about their progress and other people that think they're a, a, a sell right here and they're overstating things. Uh, the company addresses all the points and they say that the stock sales were pretty much all pre-planned, so you don't want to read too much into them. Um, and they kind of say, hey, yes, we, we haven't produced anything yet, but we've made advances. And the skeptics will say that's not enough and over 20 drugs, as you said, and they still haven't produced one yet. So it'll be fascinating to see if they're the ones and they are one of the front runners. Yeah. And you even also have a little bit in here about the history of some of their fundraising uh, going back a few years when uh, when they were kind of looking across for investors. You had some who are biotech focused investors who said they didn't feel the company published as much about their results and they were less transparent about their progress on various drugs than some rivals. Um, what would the company's response to that be? Have they changed or improved on that front? Uh, they've pushed back on that point. They say they were pretty transparent. They say there was just so much we could do. This was pre-clinical uh, data. Data, there was just so much we could share. It is interesting that um, he's a great salesman, and I don't mean that in any kind of critical way. I'm talking about the CEO, uh, Stefan, and there are all kinds of interesting joint ventures they've done over the years with, with Merck and other kind of companies that encourage the bulls, but you don't have so many of the biotech specialists who've been on board for a long time, the hedge funds and mutual fund type people. You have some, but a lot of them have been skeptical and frankly have been selling over the past year and they've been wrong, at least uh, according to the stock price. So it's a fascinating situation where some of these super smart outsider type investors have been backers and some of the skeptics have been um, biotech type focused investors or specialists.